fuck shit fuck pussy shit fuck pussy there's your overview <laughs> just kidding um i'm tanner gilman i have tourette's syndrome um if you don't know what tourette's syndrome is there's about a million different explanations i use but the science of it is that it's a neurological disorder that alters the way your body deals with reflexes so this isn't like exact science, but the way I explain it to people a lot of the time is the same part of your brain that's like, oh, hands on a hot stove, take it off. Or like, oh, car's coming, get out of the way. That basic part of your brain that deals with those reflexes and basic human kind of movement, um, mine is overactive. So uh, I'm an actor. Um, I've liked movies since I was a really young kid. My parents, uh, tease me because the first like attachment I had to an item wasn't like a teddy bear, it wasn't a blanket, it was legit this Toy Story VHS case. He literally carried the Toy Story video VCR cover everywhere. I mean we couldn't go on vacation, we couldn't go out the door, we couldn't go to church. He had to have that VCR cover and um, as he started to learn to read he would memorize the back and uh, verbatim and um, like I was saying even to the point of a kind of an autistic component like Rain Man where he would memorize every single word about that movie and we're talking all the Disney's all the Pixar's all the I don't know all the Warner Brothers he uh, MGM you know he knew them all but as a young kid I'll start with this you can't have Tourette's without having OCD and OCD a lot of people kind of view it as like the oh I gotta adjust the picture frame I gotta everything has to be right, but it's called obsessive compulsive disorder because you obsess about something, something becomes a fixation, the compulsion is like the follow through of that thing, and the disorder is obviously that it becomes somewhat detrimental. It was just fascinating, that little autistic component, and we tease him about it now. I'm just, he probably could still tell you how long 150 movies are and, <laughs> and what they're rated and why, but he was, he loved movies. He this imaginative play thing kind of fed nicely into his kind of addiction to movies. And from an early age, he loved like, for when the family would all be over, he would, he would act like he was singing opera and he would totally get into it. And he loved like having the family like watch him. And, blah, blah, blah. and that's when we noticed he had a, a vocal tick, uh, the, the ca uh, throat clearing because he was worried, he was OCDing, he was having some obsessive compulsive, uh, he was obsessing about having a cold and it was going to mess up his future in opera. So all this is kind of all happening about seven years old. And he wanted to be on stage, he wanted to be in place. He, he was asking Tracy at seven years old, can I get an agent? <laughs> True story. <laughs> We're like, oh Tanner, we didn't want to turn him into some, you know, some childhood star that ends up you know, being a drug addict, right? So we're like, no, you know, we'll get you an agent sometime. He was obsessive about it. He wanted to be on stage. And then in about the fourth grade, I think it was third or fourth grade, he was in his elementary school, Coral Canyon Elementary, and the principal, the, her husband was the drama teacher at Tuacon High School, Tuacon Specialty School for the Arts, charter school. And um, she, um, her husband needed a little brother for Bye Bye Birdie, the little brother, right? This is a high school musical, so they're all playing adults and they need the little brother. So the husband, who worked at Tuacon, asked his wife, the principal at Coral Canyon, hey, do you have anybody that you think might be good to act in Bye Bye Birdie as the little brother? Well, she'd seen Tanner every day at school, knew that he was a drama king. He's only third grade. And she goes, I know exactly the kid. And so she line Tanner up to go to Tuacon. Funnily enough, weird coincidence, my dad, <laughs> before I was even born, they, I think like five years before like my, my oldest sister was born, maybe, my dad wrote his college dissertation, not even kidding, like, like it's downstairs, it's like a 400 page thing on Tourette's syndrome. He knew he had OCD, him and my mom had just gotten married, or were close to that at least, and he wrote like his 400 page 
like psychological whatever for his major in psychology on Tourette's syndrome, which is crazy. So he knew like everything about it. And I was growing up, you know, and I was seven years old and it was actually in my first play, Bye Bye Birdie, at Tuacon High School. Um, that I was on stage and then my face was kind of twitching. I kind of had the going on and him, he was watching my mom and he leans over and he was like, Tanner's blinking and she, she said, yeah. And uh, uh, just a few weeks prior, he'd been doing a lot of throat clearing and there's kind of a story to that too. But I, um, and he's seven years old. And so at the intermission, I went up behind stage and I thought he might be hungry. So I offered him some crackers or something. And I said, Tanner, you doing okay? And he said, he said yeah. And I said, are you, are you tired? And he was like, no. I said, are you sure? Because, you know, you, are your eyes tired or something? And he goes, no, I'm good. Yeah, it's been a long day. I'm, I'm, I'm good, Dad. He's happy to be on stage, right? He loves the stage. And so um, I came back down um, to um, sitting in the audience, and um, um, he continued to do his performance. And I turned to Tracy, and I said, um, uh, Tanner, he's got Tourette's. And she was funny because she looked at me and she goes, yeah, he, he does. That's, that's pretty common in Tourette's for you to like start when you're about seven, you know, and you become eight is where it becomes really prevalent and then you kind of just are diagnosed from there. So I, I followed the pretty much textbook like Tourette's journey. And so the funny thing is, because I had OCD, because I would obsess about things and ruminate, and because I had anxiety and I was kind of a stress case, like my parents would tease me about, I would literally like stress about the end of the world, like what if I'm not ready for heaven? What if I get struck down when, when like the apocalypse comes? My parents were so concerned that I'd worry about it that I got diagnosed with Tourette's without even knowing about it. So I got diagnosed at age eight and my parents were like, he is gonna like, if he finds out that he's like, weird or different, which is like, it comes from a good place, so I don't blame him. But if he finds out that like, oh, he has this other thing, he'll just worry about it. So I didn't know for two years <laughs> that I had Tourette's syndrome while I was actively ticking. Again, I think we were as open, if not more so than 99% of the parents out there because we did know and we, we, we tried to be more aware of it. But it also, there was no um, collateral damage because if a eight-year-old is spinning around in the backyard who cares I mean people just kind of go oh that's that kid's having a good time he's imaginative play right he's just spinning around he's having a good time when that happens when a child is 13 there's some social stigma attached to that right so we had to start being more open about it as the the social world in which we live reacted differently because we wanted Tanner to feel comfortable in his own skin and so yeah and that's kind of how we approached it so i'd like be in school and my teacher would be like quit m making weird sounds or like don't twitch your head so much and i'd be like okay yeah sorry and then do it right after and i was 10 years old and my parents took me to see a uh, uh special health like mental health professional at the u of u who was kind of weirdly like the leading name in Tourette's at that time and they were like, they were like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so he, he diagnosed me, the University of Utah doctor. And they sat me down, you know, I'm 10 years old, having whatever day, you know, I was like, cool, I got a schooler, this is awesome. Um, and, <laughs> and he looked at me after like talking to my parents and he was like, so Tanner, how long have you had Tourette's syndrome? And I was like, what's that? And he looks at my parents and was like, Psh! You haven't told him? How have you not told him? And I was like, tell me what? And he was like, hey, go outside, like play, play Xbox or whatever in the waiting room, bud, you're fine. I go out there and he was like, why haven't you told him yet? And my parents were just both like deer in headlights. Like, he's just like, he worries about the world already. We don't need him to worry about this. And he said something, which has kind of been my like motto for this and for a lot of the way I run my life ever since, which is, he said, the best thing you can do is allow him to tell other people. Um, there was one time in, we were in a restaurant, it had been a long day, and we were there with Tanner and Whitney, his sister, and my, my wife and I, and, and there was an elderly couple sitting across from us, and at the time we owned a treatment facility for troubled kids, um, um, behavioral issues and drug, drug and alcohol issues and things, and um, Tanner was sitting across from us, and, and he was hungry and, and tired, and like, we'd been out all day doing something, I remember, 
and um, all of a sudden I see Tanner starting to get kind of um, upset, like tearful. And I said, Tan, what's, what's the matter? And he goes, that lady over there is, is, is talking about me and, and kind of mocking me. And, and I immediately kind of turned and looked at her. And it was a, an elderly a lady who was in, probably retired and with her husband and another couple. And I said, what's she doing? And he said, she's like, like she's you know, motioning for me to, you know, kind of a thing. And, and he was ticking pretty loudly. And, and, uh, and so, and he says, he said, I got, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. And so we got up and we kind of went out the emergency exit of this restaurant. And I got outside and he was very uh, upset emotionally, you know, distraught and tearful. And I said, what's, what's the matter? And he said, um, why don't they see, and this, by this time he's an adolescent, he knows, you know, kind of the difference between maybe some of what he's doing and other kids. And, and he says, how can they not tell that I'm not a bad kid? You know, I, I can't help it. You know, why, why, why can't they, you know, why do they judge me? You know, because this was a, a geriatric woman passing judgment. And he's, and, and I said, I thought about it and I said, well, Tan, it's because you look normal. So when you act out, they assume you have control and, and you don't. And I know you don't, you can't help it because you know, he was swearing and, and moving and, and loud, shrill voice, you know, noises, you know, a screeching kind of a thing. And I said, they don't, because you look normal, they don't know. So they're not educated. And it was about that time that Tracy um, had these cards made up. I have one in my wallet and it basically introduces Tanner introducing himself and it says, hey, I'm sorry if I've offended or upset you, you know, and it explains what Tourette's is in a really short form, like business card size, and he, we start giving those out to people or handing them to Tanner so he could hand them out to people. Um, and about that time, you work with Michael and, and just teaching Tanner that he has to tell people about what's going on. I think people should be aware of Tourette's in the sense that it's the thing that makes me most compassionate. And I think if there's anything the world needs right now, it's compassion. And we need to realize that, you know, everybody's got a different thing. And even though we're human beings and we have knee-jerk reactions, we should try and assume the positive in people first.